Hey guys, welcome back to the stream, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another video. And that would be another video of building this guy. That is the Flak Panzer Gepard, 135th scale by Tamiya. This is now episode 5, and I think we're just about done. So let's get started. We are getting there. We're going to continue on with our turret. Okay? The turret just needs this one final bit of assembly, and then we're going to put it all together. And having looked at the instructions ahead, that's it. There's no more to put together. So, this particular episode is going to be finishing off the turret, and then I'm done because, well, I need to lay a bunch of paint down on this. And, well, that's going to take some time, and I want to let the primer dry, because this thing, although you look at it, it looks like it might be black on the camera, but it's actually not. It's a very dark green. It's, a, uh, it's an olive drab, but even olive drab colors seem to be a little bit brighter green than this. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, we finished off last time putting the actual gun barrels on the turret and um, letting it dry because we have a cog system in here which I have learned is something Tamiya has done so that you can have them locked in different positions. This is not glued like this. These can ro these go up and down. Okay, but. A little while ago, we had put in this little wall, okay? And on this wall was this little piece of plastic sticking out, okay? And that piece of plastic goes on to all these little cogs, these gears. Let me change the camera so you can at least see it in a better view, what I'm talking about, okay? So, oh yes, I was going to fix that. You know what? I'm going to do that right now while you guys watch. I know, okay, so this is live. So you guys get to bear with me on this. Um, let me see here. I think it's this. I will edit this out on the YouTube version. So don't worry about that. Um, I just need to see here. And so that is my frame. There's my focus. I want to see focus. There we go, automatic focus. I don't want it on auto. So, let's move that there. And uh, so I want to focus like right here. That is perfect. So I'm just going to keep that automatic. It's turned off. So we're not going to be hunting for focus anymore. But if I try and do this, it's going to go blurry and it's not going to look that great. But right about here is perfect. So I'm happy with that. So, okay. So, right in here, right down in here, there is a little piece of, there's a piece of plastic in there. It's a tab that we glued onto this wall down in here. And it, it goes onto this little gear, this gear here. So as you rotate these things, it clicks. It's quite loud. You're going to hear it. Here we go. There's one click. Two and so forth. So we can go straight up and down or we got this. Now the funny thing is there's enough friction on the actual part that it'll hold on its own without that tab in there. But the tab just helps. And you get that. The more I play with it the more it's wearing out and it's actually breaking as I play with it so <laughs> yeah and now it's going away because I played with it too much. <laughs> but that's okay because I don't really care um, because they stayed like that on their own. So that's fine with me. So let's continue on. Now that I've demonstrated that, let's continue on. So we have our radar dish that we assembled last time and we're gonna put this on the back here. <clears throat> 
So what do they want me to do here? They want me to put that onto the back. Oh, we have a hinge. So in a little pin here, that's going to go in there. And that's it. And then the pin, the hinge goes into that hole. The hinge? Did, did I call that right? Okay, so pin is in there. And that's closed. And then our hinge goes into that slot. The hinge goes into that slot. Might be easier. To line this up with it partially opened. Let's see here. There we go. There, we're in. Okay. So now all I gotta do is glue that hinge. Okay. Or a hinge piece in. And so we have a working hinge, and it does line up on the other side. It's kind of tight. There we go. Now we're closed. There. Okay, so there's that. Let me change my glasses here. Okay. Probably gonna need my other glue, might as well get that ready. All right, so we have that on. And we have, we got our our other radar, where did I put it? Right here. This is our, what do they call this? This is the seeking radar, and this is the tracking radar, I believe. I gotta go back and see. Ah, I got it backwards. This is the tracking radar. This is the tracking radar, and that is the search radar. Okay. That's gonna go on the front. And it's going to go here on this big pin right in there. As you can see, I've sanded this to make it a little bit more uh, just nice and even across. So in theory, we're going to click down or snap down onto that pin and be done. I felt a bit of a click, even if you didn't really hear it. I did feel it. And that's it. And we should be able to rotate. Yes, we do. It rotates. Just like that. And then this goes up and down. <laughs> My door swung open on me. Got to be careful on its... This piece up here is not very thick and therefore not very strong. So I don't want to force this. This hinge mechanism is really kind of wonky. I think I might wind up gluing this closed because now it doesn't want to close. And I feel like I'm going to break something if I force it. And I'm going to have to force it because it doesn't want to close on its own. So let's see what happens. As much as I want to there we go. I got a feeling I'm going to wind up gluing that shut. And just have to forego the fact that I've got interior detail there. Anyway, we need some pieces off of our C tree. Uh, C2 and 18 and 19. So let's grab my C tree here. 
I actually believe I'm gonna so there's there's number two and uh, 18 and 19 here I can already tell I'm gonna need this piece right here and it looks like I got a couple of extras extra pieces that have no use there's this guy so I'll put him aside for now I need number two uh, do I save the peg off of it? No, I do not. I need that. I need these two guys, 18 and 19. And I'm going to eventually need this thing. This is the bottom. See, this piece here, no, number 14. Um, I haven't had any call out for this piece at all, so I don't even know what that's for. It might be for something to do with maybe one of these pieces that looks like down at the bottom there, in here. Maybe for this thing, plug this hole, whatever this hole is for, and this one and this one. I don't know what the holes in the bottom of the hole are for. But this looks like it totally would fit over fit over that, but it also has a hole in it, so there's not really much point. Um, I really don't know. Like I said before, I think maybe Tamiya had designed this possibly to have to have it motorized. Maybe there's a motorized version of this kit. I know they made a an RC version of the Flak Panzer. Um, it was, but it's like 1 16th scale or something like that. It's huge. But I'm not 100% sure. So before we get to this, I need to do a test fit on the upper hull. But I'll get there in a minute. For now, we're going to put these on. These are going to be going around the hatch. So I want them cleaned up nice. At least as nice as I can get them. There we go. Okay. So this guy, he's going to go here in the front. Let me get my tweezers. This guy is going to go right here. So, I will hold him with tweezers just to make it a bit easier to locate. I'm not happy with how I've cleaned that up. Apparently, I only need a tiny little bit, so there we go, good enough. He goes like that, so I'm just going to make sure I got him straight. And straight up and down. Perfect. Okay. Now we got these two guys, and these guys go around here and here. So we've got three, um, what do they call these? Not binoculars, not visors, I can't remember what the heck they're called. They're the windows that they look out of. There's two on this side and there's three on this side. Tamiya did not bother even using clear plastic to do the detail on them. So, these both have little little notches for these little pegs to go in, so that should align them fairly easy. Again, keyword is should. So we've got a peg here and a peg here. 
There is a thing in the middle, but I don't know if it's going to actually contact. I'll put glue there just in case it actually does. Okay. And now we want to line these up. Okay. So, we're going to peg there. It's a little bit tricky. There we go. We're lined up. It's very close to this thing. I'm not I'm not liking that. It's gonna interfere. Or it's threatening to. So I'm gonna try and keep this open while I put this other one on. Just gonna turn this around. And I'll clean this up. Same deal, two little holes, two little pegs. Let's put the glue on the pegs on this, this guy. Just so I have a little more freedom to move these. Difficult. There we go. A little hard to determine that it actually. Yeah, see, it interferes. Stupid thing. I have it a little bit of an angle so that it doesn't interfere. Or better yet, have it set right. very very close tolerance on there as you can see it's a very close tolerance I can go up about this far for you you see it's very close tolerance it's not even a millimeter between the two okay so anyway those are done next we're gonna deal with the bottom that's it for the top so now we switch our focus to the bottom piece this guy here and this thing. Why they're really going with the detail back here, I don't know. This is going to go on just like this. These two pegs go in there and there, and then it just lines up there. To me, I went hard on the interior. <laughs> detail of this thing. And that is it. So that's on. Oh, and we've got some stuff going on that's going to go on the side. On the side of the turret. Here. And on this side too. Okay, so, but for this we're going to need, oh, off our A tree. We haven't had something off our A tree in a while. But before we get crazy, I want to see, I want to do a test fit. I've had a couple of tank builds where the fitment of this was so tight you could hardly turn the turret. And I already see, even though there was nothing for me to remove out of the hole here, there's clearly was something there at one time. Okay, so let's just do a little test fit. It fits nice. Oh, it goes pretty smooth. That's in theory, I'm not going to have any problems. Okay. So I just wanted to test that to see if I was going to have to do any kind of shaving or 
sanding on that or something. You see these two little pegs here? That tells me there was something that was going to go on inside of this thing. Maybe to have it motorized and be able to turn with a couple of rods on a servo. Something like that. There's nothing else to go on on the inside, so this piece literally is just going to go in like that. But, that fits in as, as my door opens. There we go. Very tight fit at the back. So with it fit at the back, can my door close? It can. Door's closed. That's good. It's such a tight fit back here, it almost feels like I need to press it in. And I almost kind of want to just shave it. Just a little bit. I want to just shave that down, just a hair. Just a hair. So. Do it on both sides. Let's see how that does. Let's see if that's a little bit nicer fit now. That is much better. That's perfect. Perfect fit now. I got no complaints about that. So, liberal amounts of the thin set. Just because we can. Right? Why not? Why not? Press down. Can I get this tighter? On the front. Yeah, let's get in the groove like we're supposed to. Yeah. tiny bit of a gap, but that's fine. It's, you're never going to see it. And what you're never going to see, you're never going to worry about. At least in theory, right? Okay. get where my finger was, so I'm just going to add a little more right here. And that should call this done. Again, my door has come wide open and doesn't want to close. There we go. Door is closed. There we go. And this should there we go. Yes, I'm happy about that. There's our turret. Turret's done. Uh, well, no, it's not done. I've got these other pieces. So let's grab our parts here. A16, D1, and 21. So here's A16. That's these guys here. Looks like we are going to need all four. Four. 
Now they only show two here. But I've got a total of eight. So two, and that would be two on each side. Oh, they show two already fixed onto the piece. So that makes sense. I believe these are the smoke grenade launchers. I believe. You guys leave a comment down below and let me know if I'm right on that or not. And that's going to be it for the atrium. The atrium is done. Except for our little guy here, which I don't care about. So, we need D1 and 21. Well, here's 21 and 22. 22 is just the other side. So... This song is appropriate because I'm going to be painting it black. <laughs> and here's number one right here, these two guys. I see a green tank and I want to paint it black. <laughs> And that would be it off of our D tree. Don't need don't no D no more. So I'm just going to do this while I'm at it. Just to make it a little smaller for my garbage. A little smaller. Here we go. Get in there. One and two pieces. Okay. That's it. All right. <coughs> Oh, hello again, Mega Boy. I think you are my only consistent chatter who says hello and usually nothing else. <laughs> right? Almost like you come in to say hello and then you leave. But at least you say hello, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Now these have kind of a panel line, or not a panel line, but a, a mold line across the top. I want to get rid of those. They don't look quite right. I know they're supposed to be smooth across the top, so I want to clean them like that. Not that it's really going to be noticeable, but or that anyone's going to care. These things get painted black on the top anyway for the detail. And so if you never notice flat black across the top of a tiny little part like this. I'm doing it kind of just for the sake of doing it to make sure. Guess I was right about Mega Boy. Come in and say hello, and then go, and then it takes off. But hey, thanks for the support, Mega Boy. Okay, so we're gonna take this, and this is gonna go on the side of the turret, and it's gonna go in like this. It's going to sit like that. <laughs> if I can get it to sit there. It's going to sit like this. Okay. Just like that. And then, but, we have to put these on first. And these all get put on with that little peg and they all sit in that kind of direction. So it's just a matter of getting that, putting the pegs in the hole, just like that. And they have them kind of angled out a little bit. So we got to think, this is going straight. So we want them, they actually have them set. They've got these little guide marks for you to line them up orient them properly. So there's one. 
So thank you to Mia for making sure I get them all in the right angle. So I'll put them all in there first. It's kind of a tight fit. They fit pretty snug. So you can put them down and then glue them after. Now this one's a little bit loose, so maybe I'll do that last. Let's glue these ones in first. I'll just put a little bit of thin through the bottom on each. And that should be enough, but just to make sure. Okay, so those two are glued. Let's put a third one in. Lined up. I want to kind of hold it there. Because it actually is a different angle. go. The extra thin quick set is so awesome for that. Okay, and our fourth one. Right on the end there. there, a little bit there, there we go, and just to make sure it's lined up, yep, and yep, and you need adjustment, there we go, okay, so let that sit while I construct this one that's going to go on this side. facing the right direction hopefully yes that is key okay once again we'll do the first two That is a tight fit on that one, so I will just leave it. All right. a little loose for some reason so I'll use a little more glue okay set that down and let that dry now we have these other two little guys these guys they're gonna go in this back slot with the hook facing up so I need to clean them up so that they will fit flush flat. In their little slot. Like they're supposed to. And not give me any grief. Okay. So, they're big enough that I should be able to hold them with my fingers. A little blue on that back edge. And right into the slot. Just like that. There's that one. Okay. Again, I have to apologize for the dark color of this thing. And 
the fact that you guys can hardly see any of the detail that I'm doing and I go and point it out and you, I happen to look at the screen and I, you can't even see it. Okay, that one's done. So, <laughs> I don't know, can I get an angle where it's this guy right here, right? It's a little bit hard to see even when I try to get the light on it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, this one should be ready to go on. So, it's just these two tabs going into the slots on the side. Checking for alignment. Yep. So there's that one. Okay, if I try and get the light on it for you. There's our launchers all in a row there. Getting the, the lighting angle on that correct is, is a challenge for sure. Okay, so now we'll do the same treatment for this side. Again, just a little dab of glue on both of these pegs. And line it up. And that's it for that. So those are on. And that's it. Okay. So, um, final assembly is going to be putting the upper and lower hole together. Now, something I have noticed. I tried and I fought with this thing to get that front peg to line up. Okay. So, I'm going to change scenes here. Okay, so you guys remember, I think it was episode one, where I put a black poly cap on the front here. This, there's a peg right in here. Okay. There's a peg in there, and we're supposed to put one of our long, the long poly caps on. And you put that in there like that. Okay. And now that it's time to assemble this, you have another peg up here. Okay. And that peg now goes down into that polycap. So I decided to try this out, see how it fit. And I noticed for the life of me, I could not get that front peg to line up with the polycap. It just, the thing fall, keeps falling apart on me while I try to line it up. And it's just not like the alignment front and back it just will not I just made a liar out of myself because now it's lined up and now it's together <laughs> you know I fought with this thing for like half an hour one night trying to get that thing to line up and now I'm showing you guys, and boom, it like, it, it, yeah, it, it's together. See? It's together now. <laughs> I literally, I can just put some, some, uh, thin set along the front there, and, uh, put some thin set along the back, and I'm done. So, now it's together. I don't want to take it apart again. So, let's just do that. The way it lines up along the front really sucks, though. It uh, there's a gap, and the gap kind of sucks. So I'm going to hold it down. As 
so that I can actually glue it. It sucks that there's a gap because I'm going to want to fill that in with putty. It sucks that I've already got kibble on the front that I'm going to have to deal with if I use putty and fill that gap. Unless this happens to hold, if this holds closed, then I'm I'm good with it. But I I'm not confident that it's going to hold because you know it doesn't always work that way. It doesn't work out that well for me usually. strip of glue on the back here to get the back glued down. It's held in by tabs so it's not going to go anywhere anyway but you know I still want to glue it. Let's see how this looks. Yeah as soon as I let go with my fingers it pulls up. So it's gonna be one of those things. I sit here and hold it for 10 minutes It's one of those things I can't put a I can't put a clamp on it because we're at angles. The clamp will just slip right off. I have to literally hold it. You seem to be good just like that. It's holding. Alright. We're together. We are together. Okay. Final assembly. The icing on the cake. Line that up. There we go. Twist. Ta-da. Done. There's our Flak Panzer. And that there, guys, is the assembly of the German Flak Panzer Gepard. Turrets that guns that come up just like that okay now what are we missing oh look at that we're missing the tracks right we haven't done the tracks as I stated when I first opened this box the tracks are rubber okay and what's kind of funny is they almost look metallic just on their own you see that sheen but it's it's like they're molded in gunmetal color so yes they are rubber and so that you get this rubbery kind of flimsy thing to them and then when they stretch they get super tight like this <clears throat> so you don't get a realistic sag to them but you know what I'm just gonna take this off okay um, Because of the guide wheels that come along here, you're not going to get a lot of sag on the track anyway, right? So, it's one of those things. Now, this is what sucks. This is why I don't like putting the hole on, especially if they've got this partial skirt here. Why did they do this? This basically makes it so that it's a pain in the neck to put the track on. You have to literally feed the track through like this and get it in there put it around this that See what I mean? Peen in the neck. <laughs> I could just do it like that. 
Now they do have it so it's perfect, but guess what? It doesn't line up. Why doesn't it line up? Because it's not curving right. You really got to get it to curve right. So, what are my options? Is it possible to take this front wheel out now that the thing's glued? Let's pull the track out for a minute here. Okay, let's pull the track out. There we go. Can I pull the wheel out? I can do that. That will help. That will help on getting the track in there and getting it to a point where so I still wind up having to feed it around the cog here. Of course, I could take the cog off. That's the nice thing about polycaps. Put the track in there. Still, there we go. Assemble it. Now you see, that's. It seems like it's a nice tight fit. But now, what do I do? I gotta move this track out like this and try and fit that wheel in there. Big time trial and error on here. You know what? I am going to you know, after I went through all that trouble getting the upper hull on, I'm going to take it apart. Oh crap, track, get out of there. After going through all that to glue this down, I'm going to pull it apart. But you just went through all that trouble gluing that. Yes, I know. I know. But at least... At least the glue is fresh. <laughs> and it's not that uh, strong of a bond yet. So, there we go. Okay. I can clean up any kind of little nastiness that it made. Okay, so this is basically where I'm going to end it because this needs to be painted black. I'm going to use my Mr. Surfacer primer, paint this black. I'm going to take all the wheels off, paint it all black, and I'm going to paint this all black. And I'm going to work on weathering the tracks and getting them ready. I don't know if I'm going to glue them first and then weather them. I think that might be better. If I glue them together and then weather them, that might be best. But it won't really make much of a difference. It just makes it a little bit harder to... I got to like paint, move it, paint, move it, paint, that kind of thing. Um, go like this and go paint, 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 and then rotate, paint, 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 paint. That's the only difference, rather than being able to just have it laid out in a length. But it doesn't really make any difference because this gets, get, you glue these together with CA glue anyway, and so it won't make any difference, really. Um, but yeah, so, but that's all going to be done next time, okay? Um, yeah, I'll get those done, get this primered black, and I will get the tracks weathered, and then next time we can start on the camouflage paint.
and get that. We'll add some color to it. That will be next time. All right, guys? So that's going to be where I leave it here for today and call that done for now. All right? Okay, I think it's a bit of a short video today, but that's all right. So um, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what you're thinking. And uh, yeah, I'll put it down in the description box below, links to my Twitch and my Instagram. And uh, yeah, and I'll also thank you guys again for watching and thank you for coming out. Thanks for the chat. It's always nice to talk. And uh, yeah, we're going to leave it here for now. And we'll see you all in the next one.